Let me know if you hear me. Let me know if you see the screen. So welcome. Tonight I thought I would just do a little question answer. It's a free for all here. I haven't done this at all this year. I think I only ever did it once. I, I, I thought it would be good. Maybe people could ask me questions about gaps, general questions, questions about specific stocks, maybe something you're in, maybe something you want to take, uh, the class, whatever. Any questions you have, you can feel free to ask me. I have no set time here. It's just I didn't know how many people would come. I didn't know what you'd want to talk about. I have up here the one from today, which was the Nike, which ended up working. I got some emails from a few of you people that said you stayed with it. We can go over that. It was a hard one today, though, that's for sure. <clears throat> but um, we can talk about whatever you want. Galahad said he's not in anything. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, at least you're safe in London. That's a good thing. How did I learn the strategy? Well, I created my own point system. So the, the actually gaps, gaps themselves have been around forever. So, you know, I just created a way to, to read the gap, which was the, the points, the 26 points. Because when I, when I started trading, I did one class when I first, first started. And of course the class did touch on gaps, but it also touched on lots of other things like buying support, like shorting resistance, uh, other kinds of gaps, which I no longer believe there are, but even though people do teach them. Um, so in one class, the only class I ever took, I did learn a broad based, uh, you know, technical analysis view of reading charts. <clears throat> but it, I found that when I was trading that I didn't have the consistency in any of the different strategies I learned and I wasn't making money. Um, and then one day I did a gap trade. <clears throat> I think it was Netflix actually. And it was a short. And I made a lot of money. Uh, and it was a gap. And then I realized that I made a lot of money because it was a gap, but I didn't know what I was doing. And so then I just determined that I wanted to do gaps. And then it was like a back and forth process to figure out why did certain ones work? Why didn't other ones work? And it was just a, a process of elimination and seeing the ones that worked and seeing the ones that didn't. What was the one last week, Galahad, that you said didn't work? It was off last week. What was the one you said did not work? I mean, the one that comes to mind, I'll just talk about this while you write it in the room, <clears throat> was the one that I did do and I did take a loss in, which was on the day of the actual gap, which was Target. I took a loss in this as a short. This is actually a good example here because this was, gosh, it was February now, February 28th. Let me go back. This is Target. Okay, so Target gap down. This was in the morning and I love this gap as a short. So here is the morning at 8 a.m. So so I rated the gap in the pre-market in the morning here. Let me find 9.30. So here was 9.30, but do you see that 9.30 it rallied and it rallied all the way up, went over the high. Here it is 11.30 and I got stopped. So I took a stop on this and it never reset up. I didn't do it twice. It never, it never worked. It was a bust. This was the day Galahad was here. I forget what I told Galahad to do that afternoon. What did you do in the afternoon here, Galahad? You took the stop in this. Did I tell you to do a second trade in this this day? That was the day Galahad was here and I forget if I had him do something else. I know I didn't have you do this again. It was a stop, the room took a stop, and Galahad, did I have you do a second trade? I forget, I forget too. Anyways, it never reset up again. But it was a good gap. So this was a stop on the day as a day trade. The next day I called it as a put, It's it went. I mean, it went all the way down. The put though expired last Friday, 
I told everybody to get out in here. It kept going a little bit more, and then it kept going. You could have done a second put in it. So anyways, the interesting thing is that, you know, the, the about gaps in general is that people play them all different kinds of ways that are day traders. I'm just talking about day traders here because that's what we are. So if you if you look at this as a long and the day that it gapped down, you made money. I looked at it as a short, I lost, but in the end I was right. I got the directional bias of target right based on my gap rating because the, the directional bias of target was a short. But if you went long that day, Galahad did when he was here, he lost money. But then he did the put and he, and he made good money on it. So you see here that the, the target is lower. Target is in a downtrend. And it pushed back a little bit here today. In fact, what was the low? Let me just see what it was. It broke 53, I think 52, 52.77. But this is definitely lower. I'm not saying shorted here today. It was a short already back up there. But the interesting thing is that you know, the gap rating method that I figured out works just as well for long-term trades as it does for day trades. But sometimes the day trades fail. You lose money in the day if you shorted this here, but then you can do it as a put or a swing trade and it follows through. Because I'm really not following what most day traders are doing in these gaps. I'm trying to look what the institutions are doing. And the fact is they sold this gap into the gap itself. The night before it closed at 66.91, and it gapped down here and it opened at 57.41. It gapped down, you know, $10 plus overnight. That was not made by just people like you and me. That was made by a huge amount of massive money that came into the stock on the day and gapped it down. I mean, you can see it here. There's four o'clock, here's 8 a.m. How does something go from here to here? You know, it, it, it gets sold off in a big, big way. Look at the volume in this bar. So it's 956145. It's hard to believe that because you see the bar here and it doesn't look like much to be concerned with because the body of the length of the body bar is a tiny baby. But the high of this bar is 6020 and the low is 5690. And look at the volume that happened in this 15 minute bar. Huge. So the stock closed here, and then boom, it gapped down in the morning. And this was an earnings gap. So, you know, today, today was, took a long time to make money. It worked, but we made money. This here was a loss, but, you know, I created my strategy based on doing gaps, you know, and seeing how they were working. And then seeing something different than what a lot of other day traders were seeing and combining it together over a period of about three years. The gaps themselves happen all the time. It's just a lot of people don't know how to trade them. I think somebody in the room today asked about uh, the one, Aleem asked about it. Was it Aleem? No, it was Rashad. He was saying it was doing a scoop, like a bucket or a, I don't know what he said, I forget around something he said here 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 and he was worried about it he was like it's it's making a round little bubble but do you see how that didn't mean to buy it and how the stock fell then here's a one minute chart so i'm watching the one minute for the entries when i'm playing the daily GES, that was last week. All right, I'll look at that. Rashad isn't here. He's been in on trial. I forget what time zone he's in. No, I don't use any Fibonacci's at all. I've never used Fibonacci's, and actually, I don't. I don't. This is a 200 pre moving average. Here, Will. This is a 200 pre moving average. Simple. This is a 50. This is a 20, this is an eight, that's it. These are simple pair moving averages, I don't have anything else. I got the white background, the price moving price over here, we're closed, so this isn't moving. Volume down here, clock. I always have the clock. I do not use Fibonacci's, I don't, I don't use any of these things. You can go into this jiggy 
I mean, look at it. You can pick anything, anything you want. Bollinger Bands. I mean, people love all kinds of stuff. Pivot Points. I don't use any of these things. I don't even know what half of them are. I don't even care. I think that the cleaner, the cleaner, the cleaner that you can look at what the price is, the better it is for you to focus on like what we did here today, which was what was happening here. Is the stock really getting bought in the scoop or is it just doing a retest and getting ready to hold and sell off? So I'm watching this trade and I'm reading it and it's hard to say now because it's flat, but you can kind of tell looking at the bars and I'm so used to reading this here. So I'm reading it as it's happening based on the gap rating, but I still have to read it for the entry. I'm saying it's not getting bought with power money, so I short it and it's based on the gap rating anyways. But no, I like clean charts. That was a weird move up, but really it was a retest, a retest of the resistance, which helped. And I did kind of talk about that in the room because I said this is, it's a, it's a ceiling. It's holding, it's holding down, down, down. It's holding itself down. You do realize this took a lot of pressure to hold this sucker down today. It worked. In fact, let's just look where it was. Where, here, I said 55, 55.10 was the stop. I should have just put it there from the beginning. I don't know why I didn't do that. But here, 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 here it is. Look. In fact, let's make it even bigger. It's easier to look at it now that it's flat, but here, look. Or closed, I mean. Um, see, look, this is it. That was the number. I was right, it was 55. I should have just put it there from the beginning, but whatever. Sometimes I try to try to get the smaller stop, but in this case here, this was really the area, and it held. So very obvious here, very obvious. I saw this in the morning, that's why I said the number. Anyways, here it is. So do you see it takes pressure to hold this here? This really looks lower now too, actually. I think this could even fall through tomorrow, because it did break, it did break the low, it broke 54. It broke it by more than a penny. And this is, this is the ceiling. This is the resistance. This is the ceiling now that it's holding. The stock's lower. Could be temporarily lower. Could, could drop like target for a month. You don't know. You follow it through. But I play the gap itself on the day, which is what we do. Show me in a chart to explain. The shield. Oh, you want to look at shield now? I thought you were still talking about Nike. Did you do this? This, I didn't do anything with then. In fact, I completely forgot about it. I never even looked at it again then after the morning. Here, it, it did end up setting up here. It took forever though, it looks like. It had the move. This had a small stop as well, it looks like. Weird open. I don't like this at all. Is this what you're talking about here? It's bizarre. I don't like the space here between these bars from the close and the open. That's weird. I don't like this either. I don't like any of this. The first one, two, three, four, five minutes, I think, looks strange in this. Didn't touch this today. But anyways, you could have shorted this here. You could have shorted this here. Where did it go? You could have made 25 cents or something like that. If you held it, held it, held it. Could have tried to make 40, 50 cents. I mean, you would have had to hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it to 11.15 to really get more out of it. Um, well, if you use Fibonacci's and they help you, then that's fine. You know, if you if you use them and they're fine with you, then keep doing them. I don't I don't want to do anything different than what I'm doing because I'm in such a good groove here now. I just like the cleanliness of charts. I've talked about this before. You know, if I would take off, here, let's look at the daily. I'm probably the only person that I know that could live without any of this stuff. Here, let's take them off just to show you. I've done this before in the class. It's funny when you do. I could still trade like that. Most people couldn't.
just looking at moving price. Just reading it in the gap itself. So I don't want to put anything else on my charts. But if you use something now and you like it, then go with it. I don't have a problem with that. But it's still the gap that I'm doing. Um, okay, let's go look at, uh, what do you want to look at here? You wanted to look at GES. Hold on, let me just reset this up here. If you have something that you use that helps you that you can combine with my method that will make you a stronger trader, do it. I don't want to change what I'm doing because I'm doing well. But in reference to um, other people doing different things, like some people love the fundamentals, you know, they combine the fundamentals with the technical analysis, go for it. You know, I don't look at any of that stuff either, but it definitely works for people. Gives people more conviction. It, it doesn't do anything for me. Um, all right, GES, we did look at this. I forget what I said, 316. Okay. I think we looked at this Monday, but I forget what it did. Here, let me just look again. A lot sold into that level which held it down. You're talking about the Nike today. Yes. This was perfectly valid here. Is this where you did it, Galahad? This was valid. Then it ran up. Then it looked good here again, looked good here again, dropped. We did talk about this because it said this doesn't look great and then this takes you off of it. So if you did this here, you would have gotten stopped. If you go right back into it again, you're up. Here's where you get you get stopped right there. Oh, you did you got stopped here. All right, well then you got the one stop. So you didn't you didn't you didn't go back into it. It looks like that was a good idea. Not with your R for the day. I thought you were lowering your R until you built your count up. Yeah, here's a great example. Look, similar to, not as good as Target because that just broke like a banshee, but this was a good gap down, fail of the day, held, 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 now selling off now. So you could be in this short. This looks lower. So again, one that failed as a day trade but worked in the longer term picture. I found that I, I should start tracking those. That's what I should track. In fact, every gap down that I rate and like and fails as a short on the day, I should almost take a swing trade or a put in it. I really, I really honestly should. It's, it's, it's really interesting. The ones that never set up and I don't lose any money and don't set up or open a reverse swish or don't do anything right, that's a different story. But I'm talking about the ones that rate well and they set up and I take them and then I get stopped, I should almost just leave it, wait for the next day, Follow it through as a continuation gap or do a put or swing trade in it because the, I mean, it's just uncanny how well then these things will go then after they fail. The ones that rate good I'm talking about that I end up taking stops in, I could probably make all the money back from even the ones I've lost in for that and more. I mean, Target, this was unbelievable. This, this was crazy. I should have called that out for more than a month. I only did it to the 17th. I, I was just thinking a quick one, but... It, it, this could have been well into April here. This is going to go to $50. Nike sold off hard. Okay, we're going back to Nike. Are you talking about Fibonacci's? See, I just don't know about these. Nike was sold off hard and did not make it back to the 23.6%. Shield had a bigger bounce up. Okay, you probably get a bigger extension move down the less it bounces up. I don't know. I don't know. I don't, like I said, I don't really track that stuff uh, well. And nor do I think it is, it has anything to do necessarily with the, again, the one minute. For example, this does, this isn't a same, this isn't the same situation 
This chart, now look at the chart, memorize it. Yeah, you can email me one. Memorize this chart, boom, there it is, Nike. Get it in your head. Now go to this one here. Look at it, it's not the same. So it's hard when people ask me questions because uh, it's so funny, day traders are so funny, or traders in general, I mean everybody. They, everybody wants to be black and white. Mm, mm, mm. You know, there's my system has the ratings, but there, it's a six point cushion. So there's a, there's a variance, okay? One thing rates 20 points, one thing rates 23. You know, there's a variance here. Some things are better than others. I only say that. Not every gap is created equal. It, everything is in black and white. Every chart looks different. I can't say everything that gaps down, 18.2.5% is a short. It, I wish it was that easy. I wish it was that easy. You could just boom. But it's not. Everything is different. Even the way they open and trade, the way they open and trade, has to do also with the placement of the gap on the daily chart, which what my expectation is for what it's supposed to do, which would have been different for Target than for the one today, the Nike, because the charts are different and you can see they're different. Uh, what would make you have conviction that Nike was going more after the bounce at 1 p.m.? Well, I was out of it this afternoon. I didn't play this into the close. Did you? I did not get this last jiggy here. I mean, you know, I held it a long time for Pete's sakes. What, what's your question here? You, first of all, the only thing I can say, first of all, I did not get this last piece. I got out of it in here. When it broke the low and then started coming back up, I was out. I was happy with that. So I didn't get this last dune. If you did, great. Anyways, the fact is, how would you have known it was going to do this? Well, watching the 15-minute chart, watching it, holding all, and also that you know that it's already continued anyways. It's already continued. It already broke. It broke the low. It's right in the day. I did say it was never going to go over the high. Remember that? Even when it back up here, this literally got within nine cents, and I was still in this at 10.30 or 10.45 or whatever time it was when it held in here. I said, there's no way. This isn't going to flip now. It won't do it. It won't go and flip. It won't go over that number. It won't do it, and it didn't. So so, so if you know it's not going to go over here, you certainly know it's not going to go over here after it breaks the low. Whether or not it keeps going or not, you just have to watch the stock and see where it's trades. But 1 o'clock is not 3.30. You do have time left in the day. You've got three hours left in the day. The stock is not going to move. So based on that, it should follow through in the continuation of the direction that it's gone for the day, where it's going to go or what time it halts. You have to watch it and see. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You watch it. You get the move. I chose to get out. I held it a long time. I did a good job with this today. So, I mean, come on. But it did keep going here. So how do you know? You watch a trade. You don't know. You have the next target. Everybody broke the low. What did the market do? I didn't watch this in the afternoon because it wasn't still doing anything, but let's look. Market didn't do anything in the afternoon. Market held, basically, but didn't really rally. Let's look at the cues. Yeah. Wow. What did I say this morning? I said, it's going to be interesting to see what the market does today. It's going to tell a lot. And then I said, well, the market doesn't seem to be showing any interest of today to do anything significant at all but you know what this looks this looks bullish if we gap down tomorrow we're going to fall some more if we gap up we're going to hold and rally but it could take a couple days to do it and if we all we have is a sell-off that we had yesterday this market is crazy bullish and i was surprised the way we sold yesterday i thought we should have held and we didn't but today we tried to hold a lot and if we gap up tomorrow we will it's very interesting the strength in the market is almost amazing to me A case if you're willing to risk the figure. Figure of what? Are you back on the Nike? The amount of money you're up on the day? Are you still talking about this thing here? This push down from 215 to 245? You could have put your stop here and wrote it down and said, what the hell? You could have lowered your stop to 5450. You still would have gotten out with profit. But, I mean, honestly, you know, beggars can't be choosers. You wait all day for this to break the low. It does. It could have collapsed. It didn't. You know, it was a choice. I don't know what you mean. 
<coughs> I don't know what you mean by risk your figure. I, you lost me what you mean by that. Does anyone else have any other questions? This is a good, good discussion here, though. I don't know what you mean by risk your figure. You're, you're, you're up in the train. You can't, you can't lose unless you, unless you don't get out. And even if you didn't get out and you held it into the close, you wouldn't have lost. Look, the stock closed at 53.93. The entry in this was almost a dollar away. It was a good call today. It was hard to do, and I really did a great job in this. I dug my heels into the dirt and made something of it. You didn't want to lose anything the risk amount. Oh, you're talking about doing a second trade. Is that what you're talking about? You're talking about getting back into it. Is that our third trade here, actually? You're talking about taking a 15 minute. I don't know what you mean. It never went back into a, anything into negative territory here. If you enter the stock up here in the 70s, this never pushed back over 50, 45. The high here was 46. You lost me here. If you if you get out, you're prop. If you held it through, you're up. It never went back to even break even. What do you mean? I don't understand what you're talking about here. If you lowered your stop, what's the question? Then what? If you lowered your stop, where? To 54.50 or 54.75-ish? After today, I'm never lowering my stop again. <laughs> I say that every time. <laughs> every time, every, first of all, I'm tired of my stops to begin with. And sometimes when I'm too tight, it, it, I always regret it. I'm like, why, why did I do that? If you want to take in a loss at 54.52, 54.52, where are you getting that? You mean if you put it here? The stock dropped and broke. Broke, the, the real target was 54. Came down, bounced at 54.10 ish or something like that. If it would have rallied up here, you would have given back 40 cents. What's the difference between where you entered it and where the area was here? 25 cents, approximately. So you would have given back more than 50% of the profit of the trade. Does that make sense? The answer is no. Why? Because the target was 54. You don't give back 40 cents to make 10 cents. So the answer is no. Boom. Does that answer your question? You don't give back 40 cents in profit to make 10 more cents. And that's why I got out of this here. Duh. And could it have kept going? Yes. Did it? Yes. Does it matter? No. Because it's chance and nobody knows. You have different targets and we figured them all out and 54 was a target and it got there. This is basically at the target. Or 54.13 or whatever it was. Ruby. Bad Phil, but I thought you, I thought you ended up taking more. You ended up taking more, you told me. Uh, Ruby was, what was the date? I didn't do this, this was last week, let's look. <clears throat> what happened with this one? Did it work or not? I think it did, didn't it? Yeah, it did. Okay, what's your point? 315? Look how this collapsed off a cliff. Okay, Ruby, Ruby, Ruby. What's your question? It worked. This was the day of the snowstorm. The market was dead that day. I'm surprised there was anything to do. Um, Ruby, you, you couldn't get in it at all, you're saying. Oh, you did not do the Ruby. You couldn't get filled? Uh, what was the volume on this? It looks fine. Where I don't know where you tried to get in. I don't understand why it couldn't get filled. It had the volume. It did back up. It was down a lot, but it did back up. If you had kept your order there, you probably would have gotten filled. It's fine if you killed it, but... If you had kept the order sitting there, you would have gotten filled when it pushed back at one of these places. You just would have had to adjust your size and a stop. If that ever happens again, that's exactly what you could do, but you're chancing it. 
If you don't get filled here, you can leave the order sitting and see if it backs up. It did not here. Here it backed up. It probably would have filled you somewhere or you repress it, adjust your position size, put the stop. So in here you would have tried to take it. If you didn't get filled there, it moved 10, 15 cents into it fix yourself, reset the stop, take it. This isn't a huge dollar difference. You could have done that with that and you would have gotten filled on a pushback. It's been a long time since I've needed to do that, but there's something that you can use. I'm sure you probably didn't try to go back after it, but you, you for the next time you could. You're just gonna have to take less. Galahad's writing. Will has a question. Anybody else? Anyone else have any other questions about anything at all? Will wants me to look at Shield. Hold on, I'll pull it up here. if I can download this. This is very small. <laughs> this is a teeny weeny. Um, let's see. All right, so again, if, if you use these, this is shield, I guess. If you use these things and they help you, go for it. I don't use these things. This to me looks like a map of Central America. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't want to use these things, but I'm not talking you out of using it. If, if, if this works for you, <laughs> then go with it. But I don't want to use these things. This looks like something that is a map that's trying to tell me where to go on a vacation. <laughs> give me directions to drive somewhere and I don't drive anymore but I mean this you know if it works for you do it if I use things like this I know it would take off of my eye when I see the price so I I just got to keep doing what I'm doing because I'm very very good at reading price action that is a skill and, and until you develop it use these other things but I just don't want to take anything off my eye I don't use these things I see what you saw here I see the bounce up you don't have you don't have the time in here but I see the bounce up with the morning how it acted and broke and dropped in here I know actually this was it this was the morning here I can tell you don't have the time but this was the morning bounce up broke it looks like this is happening after it's supposed to happen in the afternoon this is the morning bounce this is the afternoon bounce anyways I see I see I see what you I see what you saw yeah if it helps you do it but you still will have levels like this that hit if the gap doesn't rate well, won't follow through, and will lift above this, for example. How would you know that, that you would get the confirmation? You could take something like what you have here with the Fibonacci's, first rate the gap, narrow it down to a shield, then you want shield into the open, and then you get the setup, and then you match it up with these lines that you use, which again, I don't use and I don't teach. But if you use them, if you know which gap to watch, which stock symbol, like shield, you watch it, you go with it. If this corresponds with what I taught you with the pick, you can use this to help you read support and resistance and go with it. Now, it wouldn't help me because I would take my mind off the price action. When I'm looking at something, it will, first of all, I have such a good eye that I don't need the lines to be there drawn for me. And how, how do I know? Let me just take this down. I said, I said 55 today in Nike. I was, I was right, and there's no lines here. There's no lines at all. It wasn't up here. It wasn't the 50 period moving average. I said $55 in Nike today. My eye saw this. Now, I went to this earlier and I said, oh, there it is. But my eye saw it this morning. There was no line drawn there. And I didn't manually do this until tonight when I said, oh, yeah, there. But my eye sees it because I've trained 
my brain. I've trained my eye and my brain to work in conjunction, reading gaps and reading support and resistance levels very well. I don't need the lines to be drawn for me because I've trained my brain so well at reading price and it's the gaps themselves which point me in the direction to see it. But you have to know how to look at it because for every corresponding one that does something like this, you have, I'm gonna go to Amazon. Is Amazon the one? Yeah, Amazon. Oh, maybe it was Google. Where was the one? Hold on. No, it was Amazon. Here. Here, here, here. See that? For, here, let me get rid of this. This here, you could have easily thought that it was a short, but it wasn't. So who knows what your Fibonacci line said here, but this, this wasn't a short. It really wasn't even along the day. There was nothing to do with this, okay? But anyways, the point is that it's, it's not as easy as it looks to follow just lines like that. Otherwise, we would all have lines like that, support and resistance you know, lines, and we just follow them and make money. You have to look at the price action and the gap itself. Know where you're looking for it to hold, whether it's support or resistance, whether you're going long or short. Rate it. Narrow down the pick. Watch for the setup. If it sets up in the area where those lines correspond, you can use that information to help guide you. I don't, I don't need that because I do it without it because I'm focusing on the price of it. And I've just because I've been trading nothing but gaps for eight years. So it's the price that you're looking for. All of these lines are just uh, price action, whether it's in a simple moving average or a Fibonacci that's averaged into the line anyways. The computer makes these lines. That's why you can plop them on there. There's no, there's no trains that went off here. It's a, it's an average. Same thing with Fibonacci levels. It's a price average. So you just read the price itself. What was the one that we were watching for tonight? Galahad, I said for tonight's, let's look at it. We'll, we'll do one more thing here. We'll look at the earnings for tonight. I forget what it was. What was it? I just forgot. Oh, five. Is it up or down? Is it a bust? Oh, it's a bust. Ah, oh, it is a bust. It's a bust. Uh, nope, don't like it. So this will do nothing right. Ah, oh, it's a shame. Uh, what was the other one? Let me look at. Uh, let me look at FDX. Well, I. There's nothing to look at here. Look, this tried to hold today. Let me look at this. Hmm, that looks interesting. This didn't do enough, but it did support itself today. This is a watch. This is a watch for tomorrow, the next days. Up. Well, that's interesting. It's interesting. Uh, I mean, trading is very, very interesting. I, I, I keep meaning to write this, to write an article, to write a little story, and I just haven't had time to write. But, um, <clears throat> you know, today was a great example here because this trade was hard till it broke. It took a long time, which, as you know, I'm very impatient, but I stayed with it today. It's day traders were looking to buy this today into the support. That's why, you know, it, you can't just buy support and short resistance to trade and look at the gap to give me the, the direction to point me. If you have other things that help you, give you conviction to train gaps, then you use them. But there isn't one thing like any one moving average or Fibonacci or any indicator that you can use that will tell you everything to do or we'd all have it. And it would be very easy then to trade. And there are some days that it is not easy to trade. And that's why some days I take a loss. But more often than not, I don't. Today, I stuck through this. I could have made a little bit more, but I'm very happy with my performance today because I could have just quit and said, screw it. It's taking too long or whatever, <clears throat> but it did work. Anyways, the point I'm trying to make is though that it's, it's really about the information. Everyone sees the same thing. No one can be in denial that Nike opened today, gapped 
down. Opened at 54.76. Look at that. It did make a dollar's length from the open. No one can deny that's the truth. We can all agree on that, and it's not up to interpretation. But what is up to interpretation is what you're going to do with it. Everyone, now it's easy to say now, but forget, boom, pretend you don't see that. If you get up in the morning and you're seeing this here, you're interpreting one thing. I'm interpreting one thing. Somebody else is interpreting another. Who is going to be right? The one that makes a prediction and takes the trade before the move happens to make the money. And that's how you make money in the market. So all the information is out there. It's up to interpretation what to do with it. And everyone is interpreting as something different. So the people that will win will be the one that will interpret it correctly. Because the information that we all have is the same. Nike gap down and is opening at 54.76. Boom. What are you going to do? My interpretation is it's a short. As it turns out, I was right. So, you know, if you come from to me and you learn with me and you trade with me, you will learn how I interpret information in a gap, which is a skill, and, and it's how to interpret it. The fact that it got down and the price it opened at, everyone can see and is factual and real information you can get anywhere for free on the net. But how to interpret it is the, is the key. Because if you're able to do that and take the trade before the drop, you can make money. All right, let's see what we get tomorrow, people. I have no idea. Five is a bust. We'll get somebody in the morning, I'm sure. We got two more days left this week. We'll see. I'm going to be very, very careful tomorrow. Hopefully, we'll get an easy one. I think between now and Friday, we will get one easy. I don't know if it's tomorrow or not, but we should get one easy pick in the two more days of trading this week. Well, we'll see. All right, have a great night. Thanks for coming, everyone. Good questions. Email me if you have any other questions. For those of you who are ready in the trial, I'll see you in the morning. Nothing tonight. Um, and then if you want a trial, you can email me for a trial for the next few days, classes this weekend, and we'll just play it on through. I can't wait to see what the market does. I mean, we did hold today. If we get up tomorrow, we are going to follow through higher. It's very, very interesting. Koala Bear, you're still awake. I didn't know you were there. <laughs> Koala Bear took a nap in the afternoon and then woke up for the talk. <laughs> All right, have a good night, everyone. You're welcome. Okie doke. See you in the morning. Bright and early. Stay safe, Galahad, in England. All right, have a good night.